Hello, audience worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Eric, W4EPS, and he wants to do something that I know a lot of hams would like to do, and it doesn't always work out very easily. He says he's a new ham. He wants to monitor four frequencies using JS8 call on two bands, 20 and 40 meters, so two on each band plus possibly a third radio for other communications while using either a random wire or NFED half wave or something. I understand I can use a duplexer or triplexer. Yes, it can be done. Those devices are not inexpensive. The source for them would be DX Engineering, okay? Because they make them. DX Engineering, everybody in there is an active, rapidly active ham. They're all contesters and DXers and all that sort of thing. These people know what people need to do the kind of thing that you're talking about. But need to know how to protect the, quote, other radio. Memory's going to have two on each band. If and when I ever transmit. Well, you will transmit. I will tell you right off the bat that if you transmit, let's say you've got two 40 meter frequencies, you'll probably end up using the same antenna for both. Because if you have an antenna that covers 20 meters, like a dipole, it will cover all the 20 meters. So you can pick off both frequencies from the one antenna. Transmitting will be a rare issue, but I definitely don't want to manage the QRP Labs QDX transmitters or my FT-857, my primary radio. So you've got a 40 meter antenna here, and this comes down and you've got some sort of a splitter. This is just a simple splitter that you can pick up from DX Engineering. And you go into one radio, and we'll call it radio two because we're gonna make this radio one. And then you've got a shorter antenna feeding radio three and radio four. So this energy goes out here, and the energy comes in here. However, that does not fulfill your requirement of being able to receive on both sides at once. So what you want is a splitter. The way the splitter helps is it's 50 ohms, 50-50, okay? And so this is your 40 meter, and this is your 20 meter. Now, if you transmit with this, what you want to do is receive with this, and transmit with this. If you transmit, it'll go right into here. How do you keep it from doing that? Well, you can do the circulator, but then you can't receive over here. So you've got a problem of doing this like this, and the same type of problem here. If you transmit here, it's going to go both ways like that, and you don't want that because it will burn out the front end of radio two. Another thing that you can do that might be less expensive than circulators and splitters and things like that is to put up two antennas. Now I'm going to do top view. We're looking down, bird's eye view. Here's your 40 meter antenna. Here's your 40 meter antenna. And they're both fed in the middle, but you don't put any kind of phasing loop or anything in there. So this acts as two antennas and you can bring each one of these to a radio, okay? And do your thing kind of independently. And again, two cross dipoles, not phased or anything, just separate antennas. And because they're perpendicular to each other, it will <clears throat> lessen, not eliminate, lessen the amount of RF that gets from one end to the other. Now, during the time that you're transmitting this one, the signal will be very strong you know, 30 or 40 dB over S9 in this one right here. It's just the way it will be. Similarly with this one right over here. This requires that you put up a second antenna, same here. So you'll have four antennas total, one for each radio, if you're monitoring two frequencies. Okay, for, now this is JS8 call. I actually haven't used JS8 call yet. It is a variation on FT8 that allows more unstructured uh, QSOs, okay? And a lot of people swear by it. 
Okay, so this is for people who actually want to talk to other people. FT8 is very structured. You don't have to say anything. Let the machines do the talking. There are other things you could do. You could put your 40 meter antenna coming into a DSP down here. And I'll show you the one I've got in mind that's all hooked up, so it's not going to come on easily. But this is an RSP Duo dual tuner from SDR play it's the name of the company you got two independent tuners here okay and it's powered by the USB from the radio I use this for antenna testing so I can look at two antennas simultaneously and if you did that and you fed this into the computer you'd have two screens and you could feed the output of one to the other software. You got to play a little bit with the software to do that. Now, what happens is when you transmit, you've got to have some kind of a switch over here that goes to your transmitter. Now, you'll run into problems with this a little bit because it takes a moment for the DSP to recover. It should recover in time, but into your computer you've got to put these feeds so that you can see them. And then when you want to transmit with JS8 call, you have to know which frequency you're transmitting on. You'll stop getting the inputs here, okay? Now there is a two or three second delay between transmit and receive, and that will work with this. Some of these are not fast enough on the switchover between transmit and receive to do weird modes like AMTOR, which require extremely fast switching. Now, if you want to use just one antenna, you can do that. Uh, you can get from DX Engineering a duplexer, triplexer, where you can attach different radios to different antennas, and you set it up so that this radio, you can pick a band, but the other bands will be locked out from the other radio, and so on. Uh, they're quite expensive. They're used by DXers and on D expeditions because they allow a matrix between an array of antennas, several antennas, and several radios where they can cross and switch and connect all electronically, and that works very well. These things are essentially custom built, and they cost hundreds of dollars. So you've got a lot of options. The easiest one to go with uh, would be the split antennas. Another way you can polarize differently is a horizontal antenna and a vertical antenna. That will do it too. Now note that the amount of co-interference in these antennas is as the sign of the angle between them because the sign of zero degrees off of this is uh, zero. As you move it this way like this you get more and more coupling. It grows as the trigonometric function of it. So you've got lots of options. If you just want to monitor, I'd go the SDR route. If you do want to transmit, and of course you will want to transmit at some point, you will have to make sure that what you transmit doesn't get into the others. This is made by MFJ. Again, we have that problem. An SDR transmit receive switch. And we've got the radio, the SDR, and the antenna, 12 volts in here, and then a push to talk. Now, this connects off your connector on the back of your radio that goes to the push to talk for an amplifier. And what this will do is it will switch a relay in. So the antenna will go to the SDR and then when the radio wants to transmit the SDR is connected to ground. Now the problem is in such a little box like this there's RF everywhere inside this box and because it's plastic it's everywhere around the box too. And when you switch the relay over here, you only get about 40 dB separation from the other radio. 40 dB is not a lot. Figuring that a 100 watt transmitter is uh, 50 dBm. So if you take 40 off of that, you're still left with 10 dBm, which is 10 milliwatts. That's going right straight into the front end of the SDR. Some SDRs can tolerate this a little bit better than other SDRs. When you come up with ideas for this, circulate it among your friends and get some ideas and so on. When you figure something out, let me know what you did and how well it works, okay? 
Now, I would like to put in a plug right now for people who've watched this far. Please consider becoming a member of this channel. Becoming a member of the channel, there's a little join button right on YouTube right below the video. That join, there's a couple different levels that you can join at. You will get access, early access to videos as soon as they're actually made, and it can be up to a month before they launch. So that's something nice that you could take a look at. And it helps support the channel. So there you go. Until we next meet, 73.